For many decades, bodybuilders have eaten predominantly protein leading up to competitions, with many showcasing amazingly lean physiques as a result. I've transitioned to a protein-only diet myself at times when leaning right down, and I must say I was very impressed by how effective it was. But before you raid the meat section of your local supermarket or buy a tub of protein powder to eat at every meal, let's look more closely at what protein is and whether there are any consequences of eating a protein-only diet, apart from getting super lean, of course. Protein is an essential nutrient and it's integral to the structure, function and regulation of your body's tissues and organs. Apart from building and repairing muscle tissue, protein also synthesizes antibodies, enzymes and hormones and even forms the basis of your DNA. Protein is a very complex molecule and it's this complex structure that gives protein a higher thermic effect than other macronutrients such as carbs and fat. This means that ingesting, transporting, utilizing and even excreting protein is very energy intensive for your body. Protein's higher thermic effect is not because protein has different calories to other macronutrients as some people would have you believe. No, the difference in protein from other macronutrients lies in its mass makeup and complex structure. Energy by definition does not have structure and appropriated energy values like calories have nothing to do with how your body utilizes protein. There are no different types of calories and your body does not store calories. Your body stores potential energy in chemical form. You don't burn fat or calories either, instead you oxidize nutrients for energy. Nutrients such as carbs, fat and protein are broken down to synthesize ATP and it's this molecule that is the primary energy currency of your cells. And this is important to understand because it's this complex structure of protein that makes it a poor energy source for your body. Unlike carbohydrate and fat, protein cannot be used by your body for energy in the same form in which you consume it. It first needs to be converted into glucose or fatty acids before your body can use it for energy. And if your body does try to utilize protein for energy, it's not efficiently converted into glucose and it's even less efficiently converted into fatty acids to synthesize ATP. Your body essentially has to work harder to break down protein and utilize it for energy compared to carbohydrates and fat. And this is why it's natural to feel lethargic and unenergized if you're having just protein and no other macronutrients in your diet. Just ask any bodybuilder consuming predominantly protein with very little carbs or fats in the lead up to a competition. They're usually feeling depleted and lacking in strength. But why do bodybuilders do it? Why do they keep protein higher and drop carbs and even fat from their diet in the lead up to a competition? Because when your diet is deplete of the main energy substrates, your body is forced to tap into its body fat stores for energy. Fat is easy to break down, so your body utilizes this energy source more so than protein. Protein is also preferentially assimilated into your lean tissue, and this is why it's important when consuming a protein-only diet that protein intake is kept at an adequate level. And what is an adequate level of protein? Well, if you're inactive, the general guideline is to consume around one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. If you're doing higher intensity forms of training where there is a higher protein turnover, the general guideline is two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. But what happens if you're under or over eating your required amount of protein? Well, if you're under eating protein, your body can start breaking down muscle tissue to get the necessary amino acids required for daily protein turnover. And if you're exceeding your required amount, your body doesn't have a capacity or mechanism for storing excess amino acids. Thus, any excess amino acids are converted into glucose or ketones, or they're decomposed and excreted by your body. And it's interesting to note that if you're consuming a more ketogenic diet with excess protein and very low carbs, your body will generally convert excess amino acids into ketones and utilize fat as the main fuel source. Whereas if you're consuming a lower fat diet with excess protein, but with moderate to high levels of carbs, your body will generally convert more of the excess amino acids into glucose and store more fat. This is because on a higher carbohydrate diet, insulin levels are higher and your body has more glucose than it needs for immediate energy. This excess glucose has to be stored as fat when glycogen stores in your liver and your muscles are full. On the other hand, on a low carb or ketogenic diet, insulin and glycogen levels are much lower, meaning that you will not only oxidize more fat, but also that many excess amino acids you consume are more likely to be converted into ketones than glucose. Ketones can be used by your body as an alternative energy source, but unlike glucose, ketones cannot be converted back into body fat. And sure, eating more protein than required, both in the presence of higher or lower carbs, may in both cases have a higher thermic effect. But this won't prevent your body from breaking down some of the excess amino acids you consume into glucose and storing them as fat. Consuming too much protein on a protein-only or ketogenic diet can also disrupt ketosis by converting some of the excess amino acids into glucose, which can raise blood sugar levels and stimulate insulin release. This is because when you consume larger amounts of protein, 
particularly the amino acid leucine, it can stimulate the beta cells in your pancreas to release insulin. It should be noted though that this insulin response is not as strong as the insulin response from carbohydrates. As I mentioned earlier, there is no storage site for excess amino acids in your body. Thus, when your body decomposes some of the excess protein, this results in more waste products such as urea, uric acid, and ammonia. If you're someone with kidney damage or renal disease, you should limit protein consumption for this reason. This is because increased protein consumption puts increased strain on your kidneys. People with renal disease may not be able to effectively remove the larger amount of waste products associated with increased protein consumption, and waste products like ammonia become toxic if they're not excreted. It's not just a depletion of energy that you'll experience on a high protein diet with very little carbs or fat, there's also a depletion of essential nutrients. Depletion of nutrients like essential fatty acids isn't good for your health longer term. This is also why you'll normally know on a protein only diet when your time is up. You'll eventually plateau hormonally from being too lean and struggle to get any leaner. Constipation is another potential issue on a protein only diet. Although most protein based foods are absorbed by the small intestine, they can still lead to constipation when there aren't many short chain fatty acids being produced to move along the digestive tract. If you're thinking of going on a protein only diet shorter term, there are however some pros to this diet as well. A protein only diet is a good elimination diet and few people find eating meat alone deleterious, at least in the shorter term. You will of course get very lean on this kind of diet. If you have lots of fat to lose, you can do this on a protein only diet and if you're strength training, you can build muscle too. You may need to just use an amount of protein that's adjusted to your lean mass though. This way you're not vastly overestimating your protein needs. This is because protein requirements are more related to your lean body mass than your total body mass, which includes your fat mass. Another advantage of a protein only diet is that protein is very satiating. For instance, pushing 150 grams of protein from cow, fish or fowl down your neck is a much harder task than 150 grams of most carbohydrates. If you're thinking of doing a protein only diet, or any different diet for that matter, it's wise to transition to it systematically and gradually over time so your body has time to adjust properly. Having an experienced nutritionist monitor you too is also a good idea. Just remember though that a protein only diet is a shorter term diet and it's not for everyone. Consuming more protein than your body needs also doesn't provide any additional health benefits and could potentially lead to some of the problems I previously discussed. If you're thinking of following a protein only diet or you already have experience following an approach like this, do let me know in the comment section below. I hope you got a lot out of this video. Do share it if you found it helpful and be sure to subscribe too so I can keep bringing you more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching and see you next time.